Excellence, we understand that um, uh, SADC member states, uh, they have uh, signed the, the SADC protocol on gender and, um, and development. So um, I just want you to share with our online viewers um, the milestone that uh, the member states have heard is since its uh, inception in uh, August 2008. Thank you so much. Agenda remains a very critical agenda, SADAC agenda. And then as you have indicated that indeed we have a agenda, a, a protocol on gender development which was signed in 2008 but amended in 2016. So for, for us to, to assess our progress, the first, and, the first action is uh, for our member state to align their plans, their framework with uh, the, the regional gender protocol. That has been done in a number of our member states. So that is uh, a commendable progress. But uh, there are a number of objectives in line with the protocol. Among others is uh, gender equality and uh, women empowerment. We are making progress as well in terms of um, uh, gender empowerment. I may look at uh, decision making women in decision-making position. The, the results are mixed. We started very well. We are making steady progress. But uh, as we move, we see mixed, uh, mixed um, developments. In certain cases, we have remained stagnant. In certain cases, we have made uh, progress. In certain cases, when I say cases, I mean in a, in a number of, uh, in some member states, we are moving backwards, mm -hmm. but overall, it is not that uh, we cannot say that uh, the picture is that very, is very bad. Overall, on average, we are at uh, thirty percent, and uh, in this regard, let me commend Seychelles because Seychelles has reached uh, the fifty-fifty parity. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we keep on encouraging our member states, those who are below fifty, to pull up their socks and uh, reach the fifty. Those who are even below the 30%, which is an average, to double their efforts. So there's progress, but the progress has not been steady. Okay. So we wish to see that progress to be on incremental basis instead of being on the declining trend. In terms of uh, women empowerment is also very critical. What we have observed that well, while we are making strides, but uh, we, we have not uh, put in place a mechanism which we can say, indeed, we are systematically and scientifically assessing women empowerment. There are still uh, challenges. In my remarks, you heard me talking about uh, the digital divide, mm -hmm. where member, uh, um, member states have to address that, mm -hmm. because uh, you need to have skills. You, ha you need uh, to empower women to, to catch up with technology for them to participate fully in the economic, uh, social economic activities. There's an issue of uh, financial constraints. You need also to have a mechanism to enable women access finance. Without capital, there isn't much you can do. But also there's an issue of culture. As again, I, I emphasize the need for culture transformation because in certain culture, women are still looked down. Mm -hmm. Is that you're a woman, what can you do? Yes, we yes. don't trust you, you cannot uh, lead uh, any business. We don't trust you, you cannot uh, own land. Mm -hmm. So those kind, we don't trust you even to be our leader. Okay. So if that culture is not transformed, you can have legislation, but uh, the legislation won't uh, produce the needed results. But more importantly, in terms of policy again, member state, almost all, all, all of our member state, they have aligned their policies to the protocol. Mm -hmm. But the critical, the remaining challenge is the implementation. Implementation has been very slow. Okay. So we encourage, yes, the legal instruments are there, the policies are there, but the implementation is what we need uh, to strengthen our efforts on. Gender, gender, women empowerment and gender ministry should not be looked only uh, from the protocol gender and development perspective, mm -hmm. because gender is a cross-cutting issue. Mm -hmm. So what we have done and we continue doing is to ensure that in each and every policy or strategy we engender gender. We have the industrialization policy, which will make sure that uh, we have uh, components where we are trying to empower women to take part in the industrialization 
strategy and all activities which were a part of that. We have the infrastructure development master plan as well. We have a component, we have our interventions which we are trying to make sure that women, they also take part in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in um, the implementation of the plan. But also we have realized and we keep encouraging our member state that uh, there is also a myth. When you talk of uh, gender, um, gender mainstreaming, people just look, they take it, they translate it to be a women thing. Okay. A thing. But that is not the case. You're talking of uh, gender from all aspects, from all aspects but also hol holistically. Okay. So you have also to look at uh, both women and men, mm -hmm. but also also you have to look at a boy and a girl child. So all our policies now are, are trying to make sure that we mainstream gender in a holistic manner. Yeah. Okay. You, in your remarks, you mentioned about uh, the issue of concern in the region as of um, uh, involvement and participation of women in roles like political positions and decision-making uh, positions. Um, what do you think or what do you urge member states to do to, to do in, uh, in ensuring that um, that area is actually improved to make sure that uh, women are also involved in these specific roles? First, education is very critical and that starts from a, a family um, household level mm -hmm. because if you don't educate a girl child then it will be very difficult for girls to compete, or women to compete. So education is very critical, mm -hmm. but also the issue of our, uh, culture, which I have emphasized, we need to change our culture mm -hmm. to ensure that both a girl child and a boy child, they are given equal opportunities. But also in the terms of electoral processes, we should not look at the final result. We have to start from where the process starts. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they should be, we should devise mechanism to ensure that uh, women participate right from the, the beginning. Because if you don't have candidates after, after elections, then who, am, whom are you going to appoint? Yes, yes, yes. So why, why women are not participating? Why, not, why women are not given chance at that level from the process? Mm -hmm. So that is another aspect that uh, we should ensure that women equally participate from the beginning and then you get a pool of uh, competent uh, female to appoint from. Yeah. Okay. But the other issue may be related to, um, in terms of Malta, we have we are also focusing, um, we have placed a, a special attention of, on the gender-based violence. Okay. So we, it is, uh, we have not, we haven't reached very far, but in today's meeting there's a study which was being conducted at regional level. Mm -hmm. The study has been now concluded. It has identified a number of challenges, a number of uh, gaps, and uh, recommendations are there. So the next step is now to make sure that we implement those recommendations and mm -hmm. address, uh, yes, and address uh, gender-based violence. In the region? In the region, but also, yes, in the region and at uh, individual member states level. Okay, yeah. uh, well, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, and guys, you have heard it for yourselves, the issues concerning women and empowerment in our region. If you have any comments in regards to this, feel free to email us on editorial at southerntimesafrica.com. Follow us on our Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and also like us on Facebook.